Hi. So in this video, we're going to look at the Argand diagram, which is a geometric representation of complex numbers. Okay. So if we look at an example of z equals 1 plus 2i, we can see an Argand diagram looks very similar to a Cartesian diagram or coordinate axis, except instead of an x-axis and a y-axis, we've got the real axis and the imaginary axis, which allows us to plot complex numbers, such as 1 plus 2i, where 1 being the real and 2i being the imaginary part. From this, we can work out two very important aspects of a complex number. Firstly, r, which is equal to the modulus of z, so basically the size of this line, which we can calculate by simple Pythagoras, where it's going to be the square root of the x component, or the real component, plus the y component square rooted. Another aspect we can work out is the angle that is made by this line, which we call the argument of z, the rotation from the real axis, axis in radians. And using Sokator simple trigonometry, we can see that tan to the theta equals tan to the minus 1 of y over x. Theta, sorry, the angle always being between negative pi and pi. So if you end up with a argument that is bigger or out with that range, you need to add or subtract 2 pi until you get within that range, as this is taking into consideration infinite amounts of rotations around the Argand diagram. That can be solved by, if we're in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, simply finding theta the regular way it will give us it. If it's in the second quadrant, it is theta plus pi, and when it is in the third quadrant, it is theta minus pi. And then within that, you can do the rotations, but it's going to be easier to see that once we do examples. One other important aspect about complex numbers in the Argand diagram, again by simple trigonometry, we can see that cos theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, is x over r, which I can rearrange to be x equals r cos theta. And again, trigonometry gives us sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r allows us to have y equals r sine theta, giving us z equal to x plus i y equal to r cos theta plus i r sine theta, or we can take out the common factor of r, giving us r bracket cos theta plus i sin theta. And this is the polar form of a complex number, as opposed to this being the Cartesian form. So why don't we work out what the polar form is of z equals 1 plus 2i. So the first thing we need to do is find out r. r is going to be equal to the square root of the x component plus the square of the y component squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so we get square root of 5. And now in order to find the argument, what we need to do is theta equals tan to the minus 1 of y over x, so 2 over 1. Get our calculator, which I've put into radians. Shift tan 2 divided by 1 gives us 1.107. So to two, to, sorry, to three significant figures, we can call it 1.11. Okay. So now we've got the argument, and we've got the modulus. Therefore z equal to 1 plus 2i equals r root 5 cos 1.11 plus i sine 1.11. And there we have converted the Cartesian form into the polar form and also allowing us to find the modulus and the argument. Okay, so we'll do a few examples. So, find a modulus and argument of 3 plus 4i. Well, why don't I just give a wee sketch of it, just so we can see what we're dealing with. And you can see that I have, I've done negative 3 minus 4i, which is going to give a very similar answer, with some significant differences. So we're going to have 3 and 4. So we can see that's going to be 3. 
that's gonna be four. So firstly, we're in the first we're in the first quadrant, that's important. So why don't we firstly find r equal to square root of four squared plus three squared equals sixteen plus nine, which is twenty-five. So the square root twenty-five, which is five. And now theta, which is equal to tan to the minus one of four over three equals shift tan four divided by three, zero point nine two seven, which is correct. The three significant figures already. Okay. Therefore, z equal to three plus 4i, their Cartesian form is equal to r, bracket, cos of 0 0.927 plus i sine of 0 0.927. And there we've converted it into polar form while also calculating modulus and argument. Let's do another one. I should have pointed out that because this is in the first quadrant, I don't need to do anything to the argument, as you remember here. Theta, we just keep it the same. Well, as you can see, it's not going to be the same here. So we'll draw this out. We're going negative 3, negative 4. So we're going back and down. Should I be there actually? So we've got negative 3, negative 4. That's going to be theta because it's the direction from the real axis, which is why we're going to have to change it. So again, r equal to the square root of negative 3 squared plus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is actually going to give us root 25 equals 5. The size of that is the same, it's just in a different quadrant. And then theta equals tan to the minus 1 of negative 4 over negative 3 actually going to give us the same 0 0.927 however in third quadrant therefore arg z equals 0 0.927 and if we check back it's going to be theta minus pi which I can get my calculator out for 0 0.927 minus pi which is negative 2.21, the three significant figures. And you can see that that is negative because it is in the third or fourth quadrant. So it is a rotation of negative 2.21 radians from the real axis. And therefore, z equal to negative three minus four i equals r cos of negative 2.21 plus i sine of negative 2.21. Okay. And that, we can continue on to do another two. So express one plus root three i, or i root three, in polar form. Okay, just to give us a sort of idea of what we're working with. So one and root three. So r is going to equal the square root of one squared plus root three squared. One squared is one, root three squared is three, so we've got the square root of four equals two. Theta equals tan to the minus one of root three over one. It's an exact value, but shift tan root three gives us pi by three. Therefore, z equal to one plus root three i equals r cos pi by three plus i sine pi by three. One more. I don't think we really need to do a diagram anymore unless you had to make sure that you really definitely know which coordinate quadrant is this in, although we're going back and then up. Therefore, 
second quadrant. So it's going to be theta plus pi. But then r is going to equal the square root of negative 2 root 3 squared plus 2 squared. Square root of negative 2 root 3 squared plus 2 squared gives us 4. And then theta equal tan to the minus 1 of y over x, which is going to be 2 over negative 2 root 3, which is actually just tan to the minus 1 of negative 1 over root 3, which again is an exact value of pi of negative pi by 6. However, it needs to be pi, theta plus pi Add a pi, which gives me 5 pi by 6. Therefore, z equal to negative 2 root 3 plus 2i equals 4 cos 5 pi by 6 plus i sine 5 pi by 6. And that is how you convert. Cartesian to polar form complex numbers on the Argon diagram.